guys. Finally, kid, live for the first time. How many years, B? Uh, you know what? It's 27, been about years. 27 years. 27 we, years. We are still doing this damn thing. Fire Kids live yep. one night only Thursday, February Feb 15th 15. at the Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, 10 Texas. PM. 10 p.m. One show only, one night only. Get your tickets. It's going to be good. Yep. We, Louisville be, Comedy Club. I'll be at the Well February uh, in Bakersfield with Sam Tripley, February 23rd. The Rec Room in Huntington Beach, California, February 24th. And then Louisville Comedy Club, March 1 and 2. Get your tickets. Let's go. And then um, that's it. Look, I want to watch the Super Bowl. I want to make some money. Tell me what I got to do, please. Well, I'm you done know with this. this, my man. Looking for a super offer? Why, well, gotcha. Super Bowl 58's here this Sunday. DraftKings Sportsbook got you covered. New customers can bet on a big game and turn five bucks into 200, 200 instantly in bonus bets, man. Ooh. Yeah. Right. Sanaz bet on the Gatorade color. There's all sorts of stuff you can bet on. Mm. Uh, I'll take well, How uh, do I do it? Do I download the DraftKings Sportsbook app? And then use code FIGHTER. That's right, buddy. New okay. customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the Super Bowl 58 with code FIGHTER. The crown is yours. Guys, if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or you can text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling as well. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Play responsibly on behalf of Boothill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Yes, we did, because we this is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. Got the great Jim Norton, the legend, in the house from New York, man. Yeah. Don't you like that? The legend means you. No, you're super old. Yeah, I'm really? a legend. No, really? You yeah, don't like anytime legend? you hear that, yeah, anytime you hear that, you're like, ah, oh, man. Like I, that that makes you feel like you used to be. Yeah. Right? There was a legend, David Carradine, and, uh, <laughs> the way he went out. <laughs> Dude, I said that to Damon Waynes when I saw him at the store. I went, what's up, legend? I just see on his face like, oh. It yeah. didn't go well. He's like, oh, yeah. cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. <laughs> Legend's not where's, good. A, where's a legend go? Are you another legend? Yeah, I, I still got stuff to do. I'm not done yet. All right. What do you say? What's up, young legend? <clears throat> yeah. Better? Are you, uh, how old's your wife? My wife is 26. I'm 55. See, I got I got 34, you. and you're I'm 57. So you're, that's outrageous. Yeah. But I really appreciate it. Sure. Do you sure. find last sure. night I got in trouble because I'm becoming my father, which means I like to spend a lot of time in front of a book or in just alone do, doing something that I think is work work related. Yeah. So I don't feel like I'm dying on the vine. And she she put on the notebook. And she. This is late at night, though. Baby's yeah. asleep, stuff like that. Baby had just fallen asleep, so she was mad that I didn't watch the Notebook with her. Does she know who she married? Oh. Correct. And I'm like, but I got to do work because I'm trying to pay the bills. I'm trying to figure something out right now, so I'm actually doing work. But to her defense, to what her were you defense, reading? Uh, right. Well, no, no, no. I was doing stuff that was work that was work related that was productive. But it was just interesting because she couldn't understand that I had seen that movie. I don't know when. I, I, don't, I, also, hate I don't care. It's I all fucking, fucking. Also, I don't care. I, I despise like, it. I hated the cock blocker guy. They're on the date, and the guy's like hanging on the thing. Yeah. It's supposed to be charming while he cock blocks this fucking other guy. Yeah. And I, at the end, I, everyone saw it coming. Wait, you're the guy? Yeah. The fucking old bag. Everybody <laughs> knew it was going to happen. I hated that. <laughs> yeah, I hate so that. Much. 2004, dude. Hated it. 2004. That was 20 years ago, sir. Yeah. Little, little fact but with that movie, they hated each other. Ryan Gosling real life? despised each other. Is that true? On set, yeah, they they had to they couldn't be on the like same set. They had to like have different things. They hated, wow. despised each other. Wow. It's funny. I was just why about, know that? No clue. I was just reading about Brando and Rod Steiger last night about people that hated each other when they worked. They did on the waterfront together. They couldn't stand each other. Really? Oh, Brando was so nuts. He refused yeah. to be in the close up. When it was Rod Steiger's close up, Brando just left. So Rod Steiger had to talk to like some stage assistant and do his big close up because Brando didn't have any respect for him. Ma Mad, Mad Max, Max, same way with Tom Hardy and uh, what's the homegirl's name? Oh, Charlie Stone. Charlie, yeah. Couldn't be on the same set. They'd what? Use, they'd use two doubles. Really? Yes. Wow. They so couldn't be on the Ed, set. Ed Norton had. told me a story about he worked. He was working with 
Marlon Brando, Robert De Niro. Oh, Ed Norton. the score, right? Yeah, and yeah. Ed Norton is like, this is, you know, at this time he's already a movie star, but Ed Norton's sitting there, like he's a real actor's actor and just loved, loved he knows everything about film, super smart. And there he is working with fucking Robert De Niro. Two legends. And, two legends. <laughs> they and hate the word legend. And he's in the middle of, and they're doing the scene. And uh, and he's just, he's guy so nervous, he's got his preparation. And Brando's, keeps forgetting his lines and then finally he gets his lines and he kind of mumbles them out like this and he's going to do the mumble to him he can't and then he sees that de niro he, he's looking at de niro and de niro's doing this de niro's got to got to be there and de niro's doing this <laughs> Steve, two legends in their in their past de niro's <laughs> fucking asleep and and then he goes okay cut and de niro goes did I sleep? <laughs> Ed Norton was like, "He's like, oh, these are this fucking acting. This is what I got to." Well, that's co it is because it's totally comfortable. Like to be th comfortable enough to doze off while Marlon Brando is saying anything, or bored, or fucking bored. That could be bored. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, he's been yeah. on set so many times. Just another yeah. day in the office, watching you know, an like, obese man try to remember lines. Like we got yeah, it. Alcoholic. He's like, yeah. All right, man. Yeah, I met you in The Godfather too. Or you know, even have, have you ever that. met anybody that uh, you had high expectations and you're like, oh man, that guy kind of sucked. I have I, with the, I expectations of them. Yeah. Not you know it's funny. I've had really good luck. Like I had a run in with Gene Simmons many many years ago. Um, after I had interviewed him on O and A, and then I bumped into him, and he kind of blew me off, and I went crazy on the air. I fucking, I was so you know fucking butthurt. Um, but then I saw him again after that an event, and he had no memory of it, and he couldn't have been nicer. <laughs> yeah. So that was probably two thousand four or five, um, and it's been smooth sailing with Gene Simmons. Since yeah, then. Did you see him with his wife, his ex wife Shannon? They're not ex wife. They're uh, still married. No, they're they? still married. Okay, they're still married. Did you see they did a talk show? And she literally right there said something. She goes, uh, he said, you know, she's been with me warts and all through all these, all these years. And she said, don't call them warts. They're people. <laughs> As in cheating piece of shit. Yeah. Gangster. And he goes, ah, you know, it's my. Sharon Osbourne's a savage. And she got up and it wasn't, that's not her name. Oh, no, I'm Shannon thinking of Ozzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Shanty. She, she got, she just got up in the middle of the interview. She goes, I'm done with this shit. Oh, wow. Just, you're, you're disgusting. And just took her warts mic off and, and just walks wow. off. Is that legit or was it like a work? Or oh, was no, it, no, that was uh, legit. That was a legit interview where he just sitting there like, well, you know. He's like, I messed up. Well, sometimes you fuck around, you know. No, he, Warts and all. Yeah, he did a whole bunch of cheating. Yeah. A whole bunch. But he would talk about it. He would always say like, I'm never going to get married and men are supposed to have sex with a bunch of women. Like, so I think she knew what he was. You can't not know. I don't think she's surprised. You married a rock star. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, like a, an NBA he's a very guy. interesting guy. Smart as shit multi multi-millionaire he, he was the first guy to come up with that kiss thing was his invention the merchandise he's just an incredible business yeah they man. licensed the merch yeah incredible good. businessman They're like super smart just a winner in everything the king and a great family a great father apparently he's got a great relationship with his kids and you yeah know. i know nick he's, I mean, his he, son's a really nice guy yeah and and uh he's done it he won it's just he's got that thing he's got you know and he and i Let's think get his winner sucked yeah my, my midlife crisis, by the way, at 55, you know, since I can't, I don't have a pistol to shove in my mouth. I've been buying <laughs> fucking Kiss posters. Like, literally, I lost one at an auction yesterday. I wanted to get back on the plane and go home to New York. I was so fucking... Like vintage original Kiss posters? Yes, from Japan. I've been, I've been out of my mind. This, this brand is called Victor, and they have these great fucking Kiss posters. They're very hard to find in really great shape, and I've been spending... Like, I don't buy watches. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not into jewelry, so my midlife crisis has been Kiss posters, and I've been on a bender for like That's two so years. Random. Do you I, do you ever want it so bad you can't sleep? And then when you don't, get, do, does it ever hit you? Like, what am I doing? You're every like, single you're, time. I'm, yes. I'm, there's you're a there's like, a truck I want right now, and it's literally uh, as you're talking, it's all I can think of. Yeah, I understand. It, uh, it, really? But then I'll be driving like at a, a health scare with my baby girl, and I was trying to get this car, and I'm like, what am I? Who gives a shit, dude? Yeah. There's such much more important things. Yeah. Is and it, then an hour go by, I'm like, God, I want that truck. But now. do yeah. you guys think that's? Are you? Is this a replacement? Is this like a form of procrastination or a form of? Like I always think that maybe wanting you're not. It's not the kiss poster you want. It's not the truck you want. Something else is going on psychologically. No, nah, man, I want that truck, dude. No, I don't think so. 
It's, oh no, yeah, no, I do. It's dopamine. I need a fucking high. I can't it's drink. The chase. I can't do drugs. I'm I'm not having sex outside the marriage. I can't fucking believe I'm really not. Like I, I everyone would say that, but I'm really not. And if, it's right. an absolute miracle that I don't cheat. Like I'm yeah. faithful. So it all comes out in one way. Like you block up this exit, yes. you block up that exit. So you it all comes out in kiss posters. Yeah, yeah. Something to chase. Something to get. Something to no longer feel good about once I have Isn't it. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah. Then once you get it, like, yeah, that's all right. I lost one yesterday. I was yeah. fucking homicidal. I, really I did was. it, dude. Really? Furious. Furious. Wait, wait, wait. Because you didn't, you lost the bid? No, I'm going through this one guy in Japan who, uh, like, I, it's like I have a broker for fucking kiss posters in Japan. And he's like, how much is the max you'll spend? And I gave it to him. And I wound up losing it because the max went higher. And I'm like, I should have went fucking higher. Like, I just. Do they ever tell you, like, with the, this truck, I called the place. And it's in, uh, it's, I won't tell so people don't look for it. But it's in another state. Yeah. I call the guys like, we, we had a guy come look at it today, man. So hopefully it's here. But I'm like, oh, man. But that's the game. It's the game. That's the game. That is like the game. And they know exactly what they're doing. You're like a junkie. Yeah, because you're chasing a sensation. That's what you're doing. Like, in a way, you are chasing a sensation. And you're just replacing one se sensation for the next. I drove to Connecticut to pick one up. I, there's this like, original fucking Casablanca promo poster. Uh, it's folded because it used to go to, and it's, it's harder to find in great condition, but I found one in great condition and I actually drove into Connecticut to pick it up. So it didn't get damaged in the mail. I had some guy driving from Long Island with a poster. What is it I, about that? I, I liked him when I was a kid. And as I get older, I can buy most of the things I want now. That's my thing. That's the exact you same. Can. Cause you can do it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's this weird thing where you can finally do it. And you want certain things when a kid couldn't afford it. Yeah. And then now you can. It's the ch and do you, when you get it, you're like, on to the next one. Yes, but I, I have a lot of them framed and put up. But literally, my wife wants to fucking pour gas on the hallway and burn our apartment down. It's all kiss posters. She fucking hates it. But I don't care. It's like, it, <laughs> this is the price of dating me. This yes. Or marrying me. This is what you get. Yeah. You got to deal with vintage kiss posters. Vintage kiss posters. And she hates it. And you'll do whatever it takes to get the one you want, too. Yeah, but I should have went higher on my bid. I'm annoyed. Like, I, I didn't know. realize that I would have lost it. You know what I mean? Because I would have went higher. Up? Grew up in New Jersey. Central uh, Jersey. Where? Uh, North Brunswick. So, my hair... Um, I cut my own hair. Yeah, this next sponsor's not for you. I forgot to tell you. Turn around. Turn yeah. around. You have a rat tail, dude. I do have a rat tail. It's and, so bad. And I blame my wife. She should not let me out of the house. I can't see the At back your of my age, head. You know you should probably but get you a know cut. How, you know how you solve that problem when your wife doesn't care about your hair? Because she's just into my personality. You got to go somewhere and get your hair go cut. To yeah, go, go to Supercuts. Go to Supercuts. I used to go to Supercuts all the time, actually. Yeah. So check this out. Talk to them. You can get a free haircut after this year's big game. Yeah. If the big game's final score meets... Or beat 75 points, you could win a free haircut at, at Supercuts if you register at supercutshighscore.com. And why 75? Oh, I don't know, because Supercuts has been cutting America's hair since 1975, and 75 just so happens to be the highest ever score of the big game. Okay, it's going to be tough to beat, but yeah. they could get there. That's a yeah. lot of points, but these two teams can do it. So we're looking for the over on the Supercuts high score of 75 points for the chance to catch a free cut at Supercuts salons nationwide. Head to supercutshighscore.com to register, read the terms and conditions, and for eligibility. Supercuts. Get a super haircut. Want to, <laughs> want, want to score a free haircut? Register now at supercutshighscore.com. Visit supercutshighscore.com to register, read terms and conditions for eligibility. Supercut. Register to win your supercutshighscore.com. Supercutshighscore.com, um, and there it is. Oh, man. Shout out to our favorite sponsor ever. You're rocking their sweatshirt. I and wear their mine jeans. nonstop. And, and their jeans. I know. I need, jeans. I need, hey, our boy Ryan, send me the, the, the better cut. You want, send me you the want, boot cut. Yeah, they got boot cuts. So they got the loose tight. cut, which I'm wearing. Now you gotta got to show off these raindrop thighs. Yeah, they got some tight. They got some I don't need. I don't tight. need the booty huggers, no, but, but I need. But they'll hug to you. They they'll, send me the boot cut like they're Jinkos. Now, nah, these will cling to your body, but they're great. They're super stretchy. Dude, that sweatshirt, it looks good even right now. Dude, it's so comfortable. It is the That's softest That's the Brian Callen starter ever. pack. It is so soft. I, I make people touch it. They go, why is it so soft on the outside, so hard on the inside? That's and I'm creepy. Like, well, but also, any shirt that you've seen, whether it's on thickboy.com, Fire the Kid, we only use true classic shirts. That's it. That's all we use. That's what you see me on you stage see, with. Yep. And you see me rocking the white shirt all the time, black shirts. They're only true classic. Yeah. So now for a limited time, you guys can get 25% off. Look fly. All right. 25% off when you shop now. When you go to trueclassic.com slash fighter. Yeah, try the ultra soft, super off. stretchy joggers. They are unbelievable. Oh, the joggers are great. You can do a matching hoodie, so you look dope with yeah. dope kicks. That'd Everything. be a fly it's outfit. It's a great thing to get for your for your lady. 
Yeah, or for yourself. And then yeah. also Valentine's Day, dude, guys, you don't want to look like schlubs. Tighter on, tight on the arms and chest, but leaves the perfect amount of room in the midsection. Yeah, so. but the true classic buttons ups are dope. Their chinos are cool. Yep. And you could rock that for the Valentine's Day. Hoodies. You everything. seriously can't go wrong. Whatever you choose at True Classic, you can't go wrong. For the big game, dress up, man. Dress, dress, dress up dress for Dress comfortable, but look smart. That's what I say. Oh, and that's their weird. underwear, their underwear, I wear nothing but. I got the underwear, jeans, and sweater on right now. Yep, Brian Callen Starter Pack. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now. The exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash fighter. You get 25% off your first order. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. Mm -hmm. Once again, these are the best shirts on planet Earth. The sweater, the jeans, the button-ups, the chinos. Save up to 25% on your first order. fly for Valentine's Day, the Super Bowl. Don't dress like a bum. Trueclassic.com slash fighter. You save up to 25% off your first order. Yeah. Mostly. My, my wife's from Morristown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I worked. I mean, I always started in Jersey. My whole early part of my fucking career was in New Jersey. I like it. People shit on it, but I like it. Not nah, Jersey is as East Coast as it gets. Yeah, it's it like is. A, when you think about the East Coast, you think of Jersey. I mean, you just do in a lot of ways. Is, is Matt, is Sarah from uh, Jersey too? Long is he Island. a New York? He's, he's Long, Long, Island. 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 He's Long Island. Yeah, Matt is a pure Long Island guy. So, yeah, the as, definition as, as of Long, Long Island. As Long Island as it gets. Yeah. He has his brother doing Nikki. I don't know Nick. I only yeah. know Matt. I've, I've, I know Nick's name, of course, because yeah. um, I know, I think, people who know him, yeah. but I don't think I've ever met I him. I know Matt. I knew Matt when he was Brown Brown Belt back in the day. He used to teach uh, privates and stuff. Great. Oh, at, uh, at Henzo's? I that. Yeah. I started going to Henzo's like eight months ago. I probably, I wish I would have started years ago, but yeah. I didn't. So what? It's, You're still doing it now. I, It's very addicting. Yeah, man. And you realize how bad you are at it and how tiring it is. It's it fucking, dude, it's, I've never done anything more tired you, than try to take you, a person you down. You should roll with him. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's sure for, for, for fun if you want to show me something, but I mean, what am I going to roll with him? I, I've, I'm fucked uh, up. Have you rolled with Matt? <laughs> no, even though he wants me to. He's such a good teacher, But too. he's on Long Island. Yeah, um, and I'm in Manhattan, That's so we nightmare. just haven't found a time to sync up. But I would love to. Yeah. And you, you and Matt are doing the show. How often? Is it once Twice a, week? a week? Twice a week. We do Monday and Wednesday. Like uh, after this, I'm going to run back to the hotel and do a hotel taping. Um, it's easy. It's an hour. You're just talking to a guy you love and That's great. people you and fighters who are yeah. fun. You know, most of them. You know. Do you watch UFC a lot? You, All the time. You do. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Would love you, it. Did you watch the Duplessis? Uh, uh, Strickland, yeah, I thought that uh, I thought Duplessis got it. it. Was very, very close. Like I love Strickland, so I wouldn't have been mad if they gave it to him either. Yeah, I thought he I thought he eked it out. But then you look at the stats, and I think they actually showed that Strickland. Uh, uh, yeah, I scored uh, it for Strickland. More stri yeah, but no one's wrong. Like when those fights are so close, obviously the fan bases get so upset. But it's like no one got robbed. Right. Like you can see how the judges would give it to Duplessis. Like when you see like Jared Gordon against like uh, Patty Pimblet, you're like, yeah, that's I different. Jared won that fight. Or Johnny Hendricks GSP, like that's different. Then yeah, they then, get the GSP right. Yeah, yeah. and I hate. Then it. you I can get Hendricks. upset. Yeah. Then, then I get. But then when it's this close, like now, nah, there's no. It happens. It's fun watching. Like. Doing it on a minor level like I've been doing, because I just take privates with this guy because of my schedule. But when you realize how tiring it is, the fact that anybody does that for a living is fucking is amazing to Dude. me. Like, I respect it in a way I never... I always respected it, but just being so bad at it yeah, yeah, and yeah. such a fucking lump of shit white belt rolling around trying to push somebody off. So like, but but it's, like, it's no different than stand-up, though. Right. Like, remember when you started stand how hard stand-up to keep getting up, keep yeah. doing it? Yeah. Same as, like, your white belt in stand-up. You had open mics. 100%. Then eventually, two years later, your blue belt. You got some bits that you know will work. You know, the eventually you graduate to purple belt. It's no different. But like, the place that I train now, I, I'm, I'm like back into jujitsu and stuff. And it... it this the school there's mirrors on one side of the dojo and so like i'm by far the oldest person there yeah like i'm 30 years older than everybody at least and i, I keep seeing myself compared to all the guys i'm training with and i don't like it dude it's like I, you just remind there's me. no older guys there 100 percent no except for the teacher who's 62 yeah uh who's got way more hair than i do and looks way better but it's just interesting it's just like what the fuck am i doing here there's a, there's old by the way the kiss poster you just had up i actually have on my wall that's a japanese victor poster that they gave out it's not an attractive poster at all no no really i like the old vibe of it though i, I know it's an too. old school vibe mine's well, got rips in it and it's they go for some money there oh yeah um yeah like the mine's like in that kind of shape it's not in fucking great shape huh um 
But yeah, I am. Uh, there's a lot of older guys at Henzo's. Like, there's so many people there. There's so many. At and what made you want to get started now at 55? I've wanted to for years. Like, Matt's always told me to just go down. And Matt took me there one time. And I know Henzo. So yeah. I knew that I would get connected with somebody good there. And everyone I've met who does jujitsu I've liked. Is like, Henzo still teaching down there? I, he, I'm sure he does classes. But I'm only there during the weekdays at a certain time because I have to get home and, and broadcast. Yep. So um, I've seen him there. Like, yeah. he's, I've, last time I saw him there, he was promoting people. On a Saturday, um, yeah, he's the best. Love yeah, he's legend. awesome. And does does it has to be kind of weird for Matt because he's he's a coach, right? And he's best friends with Dana. Mm -hmm. Then, like when Al Aljo has like an issue, like yeah. Aljo has a lot of issues that, with the UFC, has to put Matt Matt in an awkward place. He probably just he stays out of it, which is a smart thing. Matt is do. really good at that. Like he's like we're friends, but like Matt just seems to know like I, he can't. There's there's the friendship and then like Dane is the head of the UFC so I'm imagining that he just goes hey whatever is business it has to be worked out in a business way I've never seen him get stressed about it though like yeah. I've never seen it and even privately he's never said anything like I'll talk to Dane and straighten it out like he just seems to have to go through the same process everybody yeah, else yeah don't does. don't I think that's a very smart he probably knows not to step into that lane but there's also yeah. not much he could do yeah you know what i'm saying? like it, like it's not it's not on matt like he don't have the power to call i'm, I'm not saying he, him and dana are best friends but he's not even like come on dude because it's like that's why aljo has a manager like the business right. side like the, the, talk to your manager dude I, I know, i'm friends with both you guys so i just talk yeah with I, I know somebody who's very well known as an actor and then there is somebody who is who is the biggest agent probably owns the, you know one of the one of the owners of the one of the bigger agencies in the world and my friend has been friends with him for a long, long time. They're close, real close. And he, um, he decided one day he was going to intervene in something, in a decision on behalf of one of his friends. You're going to see why that guy's a shark. And the guy, and my friend who's no pushover, my, my friend said, dude, I, tried to, I, I learned my lesson so quickly because I said, I tried to kind of get him up and he called me and goes, don't you ever fucking ever get involved in my fucking business don't ever fucking do that that is not your place and he was like Jesus it your feelings. wow it was it was just you know and sounds then, like a great friendship i know <laughs> i know sounds, yeah. he, he was it was like clear. hey man was chill like, out oh dude i stepped into the wrong water just now but did like, he ask him like a friend like so hey look i don't know how this works i just wanted to ask is it possible like the guy got mad see I, i've done that because my, my boy's high up at an agency and this is hilarious and you guys all know him he's a comic when the joker was was announced the joker was being made he goes hey man i think i'd be perfect for this role i go but have you ever acted he goes no nah, i've done some stuff but i go dude this is like a major like yeah. they're looking at walking you know this is insane dude he goes i know could you just toss my name in there and i brought it up as a joke and he was like shot down i'm like dude it doesn't work like that no like it just doesn't no like these these there's so many moving parts. Yes. Like it, it just because we're buddies and I have a buddy who controls it, he's not going to put you in as the lead it's, it's in a like, major universal. Do you remember movie. we talked to that guy? We talked to a guy who was who had who worked with the Hell's Angels. He did merchandising yeah. and stuff from. We I did. Said, yes, and I don't know if you remember this conversation. I said, "What's it like to be around them?" And he goes, "Grizzly bears." I said, "What do you mean?" He goes, "They're grizzly bears." You, you, as long as you, if you want to work with grizzly bears, you want oh, to photograph yeah. grizzly bears, just, you can photograph grizzly bears. They might get used to you. Just remember, you're never a grizzly bear, though. Right. And the minute you forget you're not a grizzly bear, you get fucking eaten. Yeah. And it's the same idea. You might hang out in their clubhouse. They might be friends with you. You might be okay. The minute you forget you're not a hell's angel, some dude from another chapter comes in, he doesn't give a fuck who you are. And if you act, if you're acting in yeah. a certain way, you're going to get- Well, that's within it. It's like guys right. who hang out with fighters. It's like, sure. just because you hang out with a bunch of black belts doesn't mean you're tough. Well, dude. yeah. What, that, I was re referencing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but same with, like, just because I hang out with comics doesn't mean I'm as talented as you do. Well, I mean, you know? By the way, what you should have done with I'm your friend, fighter. before I forget, is you should have uh, told him, like, yeah, I talked to the head of the agency. He really likes you. He wants you to email him. <laughs> but if he said if he doesn't get back to you, just keep hitting him up. Uh, you should have really fucking <laughs> That's a good his fucking career into He him. said he's really excited about the prospect. Send, <laughs> he a, send a headshot and a video. And he wants you send to go on tape. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go he on said, tape. He improvise. says make sure you keep sending him tapes. Yeah, yeah. different tapes. Send a tape. Send a tape. Improvise it. But make sure you're in full makeup. Yeah, do scenes as the Joker. Dude, but he wants a black scent. So make sure you do it like that. A black scent. <laughs> I'm the Joker. Make it real stereotypical. <laughs> oh, yeah. hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> you just really... Just and make sure you see, see me on it so I get them too to make sure you're doing it so I can blast it out. 
That should be a TV show. That should right there. It's a great a fucking bit. TV show. Yeah. yeah, you just have your friends. What's interesting about the Hell's Angels though is I didn't know that I was talking to Hell's Angels in the <laughs> show. They make so much money off merch. They're licensed on the merch. In my head, I'm like, who the fuck's rocking Hell's Angel merch? And why? Like, unless need- you're a Hell's Angel. And who the fuck would ever do it illegally? Like, do they actually have a, a lawyer that deals with their copyright? Like, who is actually oh, going to? He knows the story. Them. I had to deal with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. We did. We did a. Uh, a similar like you know how it says like california and, yeah, you yeah. Know, what so we did a similar fire and kid thing and they reached out i'm talking like we've had disney come after us espn off merch yeah you don't want the hell's angels going hey right like oh okay no but, problem. No, it's, but it's how not, fast do i delete this no but it's not even like a, a scared no. like muscle it's a, it's technique a, it's a, like their lawyers were on lawyer. it within an hour yeah. when it was posted we're like what the hell are you doing like my bad yeah. disney took a day or two what no they one, say do they want money because I almost did for Chip Chipperson, I almost did these uh, Marvel ones, but I'm like, ah, it, it, they'll flag it. I just didn't do it. I don't mean, anything with like. You can do it if it's a parody. That's how, like, bar, you know how Barstool, you'll be like, how can they do a Roger Goodell face? Right. It's a parody. Like, that's how they get away with it. Yeah. Okay. This would have been kind of a. It You're, been it's, it's a gray area with it when it's a parody. Yeah. I do it all the time with merch. Like, the smiley face with a thick boy, like, smiley face. You know, there's a family from like ni- the 1960s who owns the smiley face rights. So when you see like uh, Justin really? Bieber, Theo Vaughn, when you see a smiley face, they have to give percentage of sales to this family. Wow. So they go, cool, you can use a smiley face, but we get this much, or you can just pay us a flat fee of this much. Oh, like, to lease it. like Yeah, and the flat fee was so much. I was like, oh, I'll just come up with a different design. Damn. It's some family owns the smiley face. That's incredible. Wait, yeah. just the circle with the smile yep. in it? Forrest Gump did not invent that. Yep. Wow. That's really yeah. weird. Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah. It's I thought it was just universal smiley face. Anybody knows. That's some family's legacy? Yeah. Hey, smiley some fucking face. kid doodled this, and we decided to go and, and yeah. get a patent on it. Who's the basketball coach that, that uh, patented three-peat? Jerry three Sandusky. Peat? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. sorry like he's it. always my go-to I like coach. Has, it's got to get off the top of, of your tongue. <laughs> That's it's always on the tip of Jim's. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Sanders. Oh, shit. No, no, Jim. you got to get that out of here. Well, remember LeBron Pat tried patenting. LeBron tried oh, patent oh. uh, Taco Tuesday. Yeah. Remember that? Right, it, yeah. And everyone's like, no, dude. No. You can't, no. no. Gene Simmons patented the money bag symbol, though. Like, you can. There are things you can that do just, it. Um, I guess. Are, weird ways to make money. It's a fucking creative way. I know, right? I know. I just, I, there's nothing I can think of. that I, Things I've patented nobody wanted. So nothing yeah. I patented would have any, you know, push in so court. Fun. Nobody gives a fuck. God, people can just. They'll buy websites too, you know. Like they, we constantly gotta stay on it. Like that's squatting. It's illegal though, isn't it? Or or no. isn't it, Like, can you buy somebody else's name? Yeah. yeah. Once it goes up for sale, like there's a like we have whatever it is, firingthekid dot com. We have it for like six years, but we'll they'll give you a warning like yeah. six months before, like, hey, make sure you buy this because as soon as it goes live, anybody can buy it. I had to I had to buy uh, BrianCallen dot com. Somebody there was a guy who bought up everybody oh. who is remotely well known. Uh, he bought their domain. This is twenty years ago. And I, I even I paid him fifteen hundred bucks. And I yeah, and I texted him, I said, uh, or I emailed him or something, I can't remember. I, I actually started talking to him, I go, This is a really interesting idea. He goes, dude, I've been doing this forever. I've never had to do anything again. It's just like I make so much money off it. It's kind of a scumbag way, but good yeah. for you. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 fucking gross. But he just saw what was happening before anybody else. He goes, I'll buy this. Yeah, I'll it's a scumbag this. move though. Yeah. Like I bought jimnorton.com. I got it I finally got one up for a late it went up because it was a Toyota dealership somewhere. So this some some guy had it because it was Jim Norton Toyota, and then it finally went up, and I I I took yeah, it. Yeah, like right But I away. wouldn't have paid a lot of money for it either. No. It's like if you see my ticket sales, fuck you. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not spending what bonus? So I'm <laughs> <laughs> what bonus? <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. Fucking, it's, we were talking about that before. We just staying relevant and constantly hustling. Yeah. Is, well, is, the game's changed since you guys got involved, right? Oh, like it's like dude, the yeah. promotion side's almost bigger than the material side. You gotta understand yeah. though, you, Jim and I came up, and we had a whole. We, there was an industry that did it all for you. It just they all you had to do. Well, was the think promotions about it and you're talking about, you'd rely on the club to put a banner. All out of front. it, all of it. But now your it's agents, like, your manager. Yeah, but now it's like you could do that. No, but no, but you have to take control of no, it. Like you, you have to. You look at like what Schultz is doing. You look at De Stefano. Burt Kreischer's the the epitome of it. You know. Yeah, yeah I'm not I saying the material is bad. I'm saying there's guys who aren't a fraction of good as stand-ups as you are, but sell tickets because 
they're good at the promotional side. What I like to do, I find what's really effective is I just put up a banner where it's not a good picture of me with dates on it. And I say, let it just fade into nothingness. Uh, and it's really great. It motivates no one to come to the yeah, show. Yeah. Just a picture of you like this. Yeah. Yeah. Jim peaked in 07 Norton. That should be my fucking, my nickname. Peaked in 07. <laughs> Norton. Yeah. You got to be realistic about these things. Do you, do, you, do you have trouble writing or do you still writing a lot? I always write on stage. I know saying that makes me sound like such a douchebag. No, you're at the cellar. But, it, but it's just the way i've always been good at like talking through an idea um on stage and just playing with it because you, again you're on there i'm doing two sets a night i thought that was one of your best promote i see all your stuff obviously jim but uh, one of your promotional things you did you were doing a bit on stage and you messed it up and it went nowhere and you're like tickets at blah 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 but it was like so authentic and no one posts you know when they do bad or if it flubbed a lot like i, I forget what i was only was. posting bomb clips yeah he's, he's, oh, he's only posting bombs it was great Have you seen this uh brian holtzman I love Brian Holtzman. You see what he's posting now? No. He's posting people walking out of his shows. Oh, that's funny. Fuck that guy. Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, no, 40. I saw that. I Brad get, Forte's, yeah. They're all losing their mind. Fucking, he's insulting. He's, it's, it's great. And they're like, well, I think he'd like to hear that. <laughs> There's a certain clientele that's going to see that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my oh, guy. Yeah, I like this guy. Yeah. You can turn anything into any failure into success. If you I'll tell you what you it. can't though: bombing clips. Do not, do not turn into success. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you. Yeah, They're I thought about. I think. I think <laughs> most, most comics enjoyed it, but I was like, I wonder if the fans like. No, that. they didn't care. The like, comics so funny anymore. Oh, dude, the comics <laughs> love. I, I, was, I was. I loved it, dude. <laughs> I went. To, I did the Friars Club one million years ago. I remember, and uh, I said to my buddies who was there, it was Grillo and my buddy Gavin O'Connor, who's a big director and did the accountant and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and then my buddy Johnny and uh, and then a couple other guys and I said uh, we were eating at Mastros and I said I got to do a set. And they go, you do? And I go at the Friars Club. Uh, and I go, I'm going to do 40 minutes and it's just going to be bird humor because I had 40 minutes on birds. I go, it's going to just be bird humor, and I'm going hard and I'm going to do it slow and deliberate. I hope you enjoy this, dude. I did. I'm fucking dying. I'm doing bird comedy the penguin and everything oh dude i go i'm one of the top bird humorous <laughs> country guys so this is a uh, sorry i'm sorry if it's bird heavy it's just i'm i'm an avian sorry if it's bird heavy i'm an sorry if it's bird heavy i'm an avian enthusiast what's the deal with ostriches it's like said a no one ever turkey. sorry if it's bird heavy the comics and my friends are <laughs> like laughing so hard audience not having it the audience Different. i heard just silver or chain the clank <laughs> clank of a fork the fuck plate. like looking at me like this there was a girl who liked me uh, we had kind of gone on a date and she was with people and she was just looking at me like this. I, she had, she was like, I don't like this guy. She couldn't have blown me off harder. My friends in the comics back there <laughs> and then red buttons. Remember red oh, buttons, yeah. the great red buttons. Sure. Like one of the greatest came up to me and goes, you got a lot of imagination and you're going to go a long way in this racket kid. I was so impressed. Red you buttons. didn't let them bother you at all. He was fucking loving it. I was like, hey, hey. I go, thanks, guys. That's my bird humor for, for today. Um, I'll see you next dude, week. Enjoy we, we your fruit comic, compo, you dude, fucks. Dude, we had a comic at the improv. It was a shop in front. <laughs> He's all excited because he had these two girls in the front row. He goes out, bombs, eats all the dicks. Yeah. And comes. He's like, oh, man, I don't know, man. It's just the, the crowd's not feeling I'm like, yeah, the material was tough, dude. And then he looks at it, he goes, ah, oh, fuck, she's leaving, dude. <laughs> Like oh, the that, girl that, left? Yeah, she left because he just ate shit. Yeah. Friars He's Club, like, oh. That's a hard gig. Like, I did one set there. Uh, I remember, I forget what it was for, but I remember Donnie Most from Happy Days was in the audience, and I really wanted a picture with Donnie Most from Happy Days, Ralph Mouth. I worked with and him. And I fucking ate my dick, and I was like, I, I was too embarrassed to go over and talk to him. Yeah, oh there he is, God. Don Most now. Hey, who was, who was the guy who we were playing that casino in Vegas? Oh, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. So, the fighter? No, Johnny no, I Walker. wish. Good times from Good Times. Dino Mike. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker. Walker. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker. <laughs> sure, yeah. Sure, Dino sorry. Mike. Sorry. So yeah. I'm younger. I don't know who he is. And they, we wanted to book our host or feature. They go, no, we use the same guy every time. You're going to use uh, Jimmy Walker. We're like, all right, whatever. We get there. I don't know who he is. Brian's like, dude, that guy was a big deal a while ago. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So he refuses to look at us, and then finally, I'm like, "Hey, man, so do you want to like go over like the set or whatever? Where you, how much time are you gonna do?" He goes, "Nah, son, I, I've been doing this a long time. I got it. I got it. You guys do your thing. I'll bring you up." I'm like, "All right, whatever." And then he won't talk to us. So I go, "But he was he was so funny. I, he was funny." But I go, "I go, Brian, let's go talk to him. At least make, it's uncomfortable in the green room." So we go over, and he's not looking at us. And he goes, "I've been doing this about 50 years. I've seen everybody. Never heard of you two. And I was like, "Okay." All right, well, well no, he goes, yeah. I'll see you out there. The best was he goes like this. He goes, um, he said, uh, 
they showed me the poster of you guys, and I said, yikes. <laughs> it's the first thing he said, and I was like, I don't know what yikes means. And he goes, anyway, I worked with David Letterman. I don't know if you ever heard of him, right? He just he was funny. He was joking around with oh, that. But I, don't, I couldn't of. figure out if he was fucking. And then he gets up and does stand-up. And and it's not bad. I mean, he's, it, he was he it was he our crowd. It was our crowd. He ate shit. And then he Brendan shit. goes up there to go to shake his hand. He goes, "Don't touch me." <laughs> and wow. then I was like, "Oh!" For and then sure. I got on the mic and roasted him, right? Because yeah. he was selling the CDs. Yeah. So make sure you get your Jimmy Walker CDs on the way out, everybody. Yeah. He had signed eight by tens. Let's be honest, it's not exactly a love fest. Two minutes ago, you guys said Johnny Walker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he believe, said Johnny. No, but it's fine. <laughs> it's like you guys won. I mean, all these years later, he was at good times in 76, and you're like, that John Walker kid. And you're like, it's Jimmy Walker. He's, he's I, my feeling, though, is that he's he's actually loves to play around. And he's he probably is kid. fucking around. I think so. I actually think he's, yeah, I, I actually ended up thinking, I think he was just fucking with us, and I yeah. missed the joke. I, I, met, I met him. He hosted... Or he was he was on a uh, the Louis Anderson show I did. We were on the same episode. It's like the weekend I met Dice in '97, oh my God. and uh, I think he was on the episode with me. And he, he looks and I, good. He was very. He does look really great. He's an older guy. He's funny too. He's smart. He was very nice. But yeah. I, but again, I, I talked to everyone's nice on a TV taping. Like usually when everyone else is, everyone's nervous. No one wants to be a dick. Like yeah. you in Montreal, no one's a fucking asshole on those yeah. tapings because everyone's panicking. Yeah. So what? So you're doing this uh, YouTube show with your wife? Yes. What's it called? It's just Nikki and Jim NYC. It's our channel. And and what do you guys do? Just slice the life stuff? It's just pieces of our life. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's like, I can't watch myself. Uh, Can you but bring it, it up to? No, uh, just even, I can't watch Dude, any you're of You're exactly like me. Trying to, you promoting, you self promoting is, it's like, because you're Irish. It's like so anti Irish. It's like the idea that yeah. you're Irish, right? Am I wrong? Uh, yes, I can't do it though. It's like when you're Irish from Jersey. <laughs> no, I can't watch. I can't watch me. Okay, so I can't watch I, it. I can't watch me. I can't that's watch it. It's, it's, it's almost like a vlog ish. Kind of, that's all it is, yeah. That's all it is. It's just she and I together, just little pieces of our life. And, uh, and how'd, you, how'd you meet her? Um, she Facebooked me, uh, and then I kind of became uh, very into her very quickly after that because she was uh, naked on camera. But oh, she Facebooked okay. me because okay. I talk, she's transgender, and I talk about trans women in my act, and so she, she liked that I did so talk about So she was a man, that. now she's a woman. Yes. She was I, born male, yeah. You never cease to amaze me, Jim Norton. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been married for two years. That's I mean, uh, yeah, she's great. My, my buddy said to me, he goes, uh, he's a very straight guy, and he goes, I want to have sex with a transgender woman. And I go, okay. And he goes, I just want to see what it's like. I want to see if it's better than the real thing. And I said, Okay. You're, might, you're a little bit gay, right? Yeah, you're, you're not straight. I mean, I, I, yeah. it, being a homosexual is different, but and I, guys are like, Jim, you're delusional. I'm like, you're not straight. If you have somebody who's trans and they have a dick, I don't think you're straight. Yeah. You call yourself what you want. I don't care. So she is a fully transitioned? No. Oh, no? No. Okay. No. So, so you're a little gay. It, it's. Have I, you always been a little bit... I mean, sure. I mean, I talked about Monster Rain in 2007 on HBO. Where I blew home. all my friends when I was a kid. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's it's old hat at this point. Yeah, I've been talking about this. I didn't know this, this about stuff. you, Jim. Oh my god! Oh, I mean, this is fucking even. I knew this. Oh, the really? Uh, yeah, oh, I've been the talking about heels. this for How did 20 I miss years. This? Hey, we're all busy. I mean, uh, <laughs> everyone's doing their thing. <laughs> hey, Brian, uh, how many tickets do I have sold? Jim blew his friends when he was a kid. All right, but uh, how many tickets? We're, we're busy. This we're just doing things. great, Jim. Yeah. God, I love you. Thank you. I love you. Yeah, yeah. I, but, um, but as a kid, you were just curious about it, and then you started blowing your friends. Was that the first time? I mean, it's, it's not even curious. You just kind of fall into it. Like, I don't remember. I mean, I liked girls, too. You fall into cock. Yeah, you did. You just kind of you lean oh, over, you're cock. yawning, and there it is. <laughs> happens. You're blowing your friend, and you're like, that wasn't yeah, bad. You're wrestling. Somebody's cock flies out of speedo it's like whatever there we what go what am i gonna do be rude <laughs> <laughs> can't jim get him to put it back in his pants when it's hard oh, it's but i was i think i was bullied when i was a kid i used to blow this kid who used to pick on me but then there was other kids who i just was friends with and we would do it so yeah like to be with somebody who, who has actively has a penis yeah um there's guys who like they want to have this whole thing of you're totally straight because they have a certain narrative they push yeah but it's hard to say that it's like i i think that you're these progressives who want to tell you that you're straight uh, they're not as progressive as they think. They're actually married to the 1950s idea yeah. that straight is the right answer. So we have to find a way to make anything you're doing hetero. It's like, that's a 1950s thought. I just don't think you're straight. But you have you have such a bro Me. following, right? Yeah. Don't you think? And and did that, what was that like when you told them that? You yeah, there, is, was there backlash? I mean, not that you read comments, but were people like, <sighs> Who oh. Gives a fuck? I mean, like I've been talking about it for so long, like literally over 20 years. Yeah. So anybody, like especially if they were a fan, anybody who doesn't know, 
um, has literally had their radio turned off since 2004. I mean, I've See, referenced. You've always it. been. I've always. I said that. I, you've always been the most transparent, honest motherfucker on the planet, which is what part, part of what I love about you as a comic too. But thank you. And as a person, I mean, I you know we don't know each other well, but right. I always knew that the one thing about you is that you are as authentic as it gets. I mean, I and question I, the friendship now. You know, he blew kids in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, we lived in different I, districts. I know. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I can't believe you in my inner circle. You understand? Oh, I understand. No, no. I know because I put the cracker on the floor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it's not. So, true. so you, so you met this. The, you met your wife. Yes. And and was watching her, him. I don't know how her. Yeah, her. But I understand. But th there's a whole thing of her and him. I mean, people will say like him or she's a guy. Like I, I, I mean, I know that usually when people say that, they're trying to be shitty, right. and they're allowed to be shitty if they want to. But we met, uh, she had sent me a quick Facebook message because I talk about this stuff in interviews. And I've gotten a lot of messages from trans girls because I talk about it and a lot of guys don't. So they're always like, hey, thanks for saying that. Or yeah. I'm so happy that you're comfortable talking. Uh, she's gorgeous. Well, thank you, yeah. And she's funny and uh, we, I mean, you know, she's, she's my best friend. I have a great relationship with her. Um, and what, when did she decide to transition? She's still intact, but. I want to say 12 years ago or whatever. Did she take estrogen? Uh, yeah, so yeah, she takes her pills every day. Okay, and then, but she still has other things. A she, dick, yeah, she has okay. a dick, yeah. Which is, uh, you're, that is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just- Very it, attractive human being, I have to say. Well, thank you, yeah, and she's- uh, All the way around. Yeah, I just, uh, we, we match well. Because yeah. again, she's not fragile. Her personality is, she's very headstrong. She's, you know, I respect her opinions on things. We don't always agree, but she's- uh, She's very comfortable stating an opinion that nobody is going to like. And she liked you because of your comedy. She just wanted. This. She's Norwegian, so they're very literal people. Like you know what I mean. Like not good to dirty talk with. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like you know, I was like, hey, I'd love to watch you fucking somebody else. You wouldn't like that. I know. I'm being fucking dirty. Uh, it, it's like the literal fucking. Um, yeah, literal. She's very linear, very literal. Very linear. But she likes the comedy. Uh, I, I talk about our us a lot. Uh, in the in our act, I talk about her as a person. I talk about the sexual stuff, and she loves it. Like she's so not shy about it. She has no shame about, it. and I like that. Like, how it, long has she been transitioning? Again, I want to say about twelve years. It was long before I met her. Um, before this became fashionable. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I always like. You know, now it's in the zeitgeist, and, and everybody knows about it, and people talk about it. But when I, when I first became aware of it was I was fifteen. Like I was, it was nineteen eighty three, and I was watching porn with my friends. Like I didn't know it existed. Wow. Um, so you but know, it turned, when you saw it on, on porn, it turned you on. It it fucking all my friends were like that's disgusting, and I was like yeah. But I made a mental note. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like aha. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant, right. but it meant something. Yeah. And that's how it works. I didn't know what it what. But not men. So men men don't excite you the way. I've had sex with men, but it's not what I want. There's no love there. It was purely, I think, addictive behavior. Uh, but the idea of like holding, a, like I'm kissing a man, like, like, and I, like, like I find that as uncomfortable as any of my male friends would find it with me. Like, I love Bob Kelly, but I wouldn't jerk him off if it would save his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But a guy kissing a guy with a beard is not. It, 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 no, I mean, look, socially, I have no problem with it, yeah. but it does. It does. This. It. It. I feel the same way about it sexually that you would probably feel the same way about it sexually yeah it doesn't move me in any iota and that's right. not because i don't want it to it just doesn't it never but happens. then but then uh, but somebody who's feminine with a dick it depends on the person like yeah. i like trans women you're and complicated it, no it's, it's not just, really most people have i think you're making it more complicated most people have different nuances in what they like look we all have our sexual stuff right like as straight guys you like what you like yeah. and whatever it is some of it's like very in and out and some of it's probably real private I don't care if people have private sexual stuff. Everyone does. Yeah. But when men who like trans girls don't even admit that they like them. Yeah. It's like you're letting this whole group of people just sit there and you won't acknowledge. I think my friend is that way. I think my friend won't admit it, but I think he dates women and he loves women. But I think he's got a thing for trans men or trans women. Trans women, yeah. There's something about it. Do I know? I don't think so. But there's something about it that 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 I was very surprised at because he couldn't be straighter, quote unquote. Yeah. But there's a thing that's going on there for him. Sure. And there's a lot of guys like that, and they just don't. And again, I'm not saying you have to reveal your private sexual desires because everyone has them. Yeah. But to, it's almost like saying, you know, you, you, if you like one group of people and just deny that that whole group of people does anything for you, 
and you see them like getting treated like shit and talked about right. like they're shit. You don't have to jump in socially and change the world, but you can at least go, yeah, well, I'm I'm very attracted. I like trans girls. Like you were least- probably sexualized with uh, the same sex when you were younger as a straight boy, and that felt good. And so, or is just why I don't that. think or I was just a straight what boy though. Like, oh, you were never. Still nah, I, I don't right. know because again, maybe I was sexual. My therapist tells me I was molested. I'm like, nah, I showed up. It felt good. Yeah, yeah I yeah. like blowing my friends. I like getting blown. Yeah. we're all the same age. Yeah, you no know one's forcing I mean? to keep going right. back. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah, people want to sucks. People want to pathologize or traumatize it, yeah. but it's not. No, no, I don't. If it was maybe by the classic definition, there was a kid that I was terrified of. Uh, who I would blow, and I could smell the mothballs in his Budweiser shorts. Um, he, was, he always wore Budweiser bathing trunks. Um, mothballs. Yeah, yeah, it smelled like mothballs. Very strange yeah. old lady family he had. But uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I can't pretend I was victimized by it. I think it's just my makeup. It was yeah. my nature. You you're like wiring. what you like. I, th- I think you're one of the only guys, too. Like, you're not defined by it, right? Like, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, like, like, I've I known don't... it for a while. I didn't even think like when you go on shows like most people that's what they identify it's the like first they're, time I've they're heard gonna come about. they're gonna come on and talk about sure. being married to a trans person <laughs> no I, it's my I life would, being married to me I'm sorry but being married is the crazy part for me like we don't just sit around and talk about her being transgender it's like I don't wake up every day how was your journey like we, <laughs> she's my fucking wife like you know it's like hey go to the store I went yesterday it's the same shit everybody fights of about um, but no I don't have an agenda with it yeah. but you can't in anything like with stand up Like, there's an old expression, if you're okay with it, the audience is okay with it, Um, and you have to be willing for some people to not be okay with it, Um, and I just don't care who's okay with it. Have you had anybody, probably not in the comedy circle, but family, anybody who's not okay with it? Luckily, no. My family's great. My mom, my dad, my sister, they're very, very, uh, they were very accepting. Great. Um, But if they weren't- But they had you as a son. You you resonated at a different tempo, just as a comic. You've always had- that wonderful misfit energy, which I think is kind of a must if you want to be a, a comic worth your sure. Shot. You got to come. There's got to even if you don't come from dysfunction, you got to create your own dysfunction. But still, his dad was probably born in what the forties. My dad it's was a born little in bit the early forties. Yeah. yeah, he didn't unintended. mind it. All. My, my, I mean, my parents again, they were open-minded people. They, they weren't. <clears throat> my dad, when they retired, my dad was military. He was uh, he was in the Marines in the sixties. He was a command sergeant major in the army. He worked for the post office. Yes, wow. dude. My mom was a librarian. Uh, but they were very realistic people. They knew who their son was. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, your parents always know. Oh, they do. Um, and again, anybody who was in my life who didn't like it or who didn't accept Nikki as my partner, my wife, get the fuck out of my life. Like, I don't have to have an aggressive falling out, but I'm fine cutting anybody off. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't be friends with somebody who has I- trouble with the truth. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Like, it's, right. it's, I'm 55 years old. Why would you, though? Yeah, you see can't. You. And you that, isn't that, that's a, the other good thing about being older. Yes, like you start to realize, I don't need you, man. It's like I got my, I got my, my friends. I got my family. I got my kids. I got. It's like uh, there are people out there that will disappoint you or surprise you with how callous they can be. Or you also only ha- be. have bandwidth for so many people. <clears throat> like the people yep. that text me, it's always drama. I'm like, I'm good, man. I'm done with this. Yeah, like, I'm done with the energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very. It gets to be very draining when you engage it. Like, and it's not that I think I'm too good for it. It's just like I just don't enjoy it. No. Like, I, if somebody heckles me in a club, I enjoy that because you can be really mean to somebody who has to just sit there around other people who've just seen them be humiliated. Yeah. Like that's satisfying. Yep. Yes. But any of the other stuff, like we knew we were going to get a lot of hate. I don't care about that. Like, you know, oh, you're a faggot. All right, good. So yeah. what? Yeah. Like that, it's meaningless. Oh no. To me. Oh yeah. no, that's a terrible thing to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's been surprisingly, people have been much cooler than I would have thought. Yeah. Like it's been much nicer than I thought. Um, yeah. So yeah. I also don't. I think you're different too, where you don't throw it in everybody's face. Like I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh yeah. See, I, I, for me, what happens when I hear that? Maybe because I'm just older and I know you. Is I'm like. Of course, that makes sense. It's fantastic. It just adds another layer of color, Jim Norton. Well, you have to know like what you're, like I'm a comedian. My job is not to teach lessons. Right. I don't fucking teach lessons. No. I'm not, I don't educate people about trans people. I'm not an expert. I just, I'm in love with somebody and we're married and yeah. that's it. And if you go around teaching people lessons on stage, it's fucking boring. Nobody right. wants to be scolded or talked at. The worst. And you know what you have to do. I don't care who you vote for. Make me laugh. Exactly. Make a point through your joke. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. But my job is not to scold people and uh, and tisk tisk them. Uh, I because I just don't care how they feel about it. I think everybody likes to laugh. I think and everybody needs it. Uh, you know, there's enough seriousness out there in the fucking world. I think that's something about laughter. When you're at watching somebody crush a room, you forget. You forget 
all the things that make you human. You forget you have to go to the bathroom. You forget you have to make money. You forget your wife's cheating on you. You forget yeah. you hate your job. I mean, me and Jim are Jim thinking about kiss poster. I'm thinking about trucks. Yes. Yeah, here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't go away. That's what <laughs> yeah. you're thinking about. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, that never, yeah, that never leaves your head. It, it is always kind of just there, like an odor in the room, the always. fucking kiss poster, that Victor poster. I'm thinking of it the whole time. It's incredible. Uh, Gene that, Paul, Ada, Ada so, Peter. So what's the, what's the holy grail for you kiss poster-wise? I, I, I got, like, which was the original Casablanca promo poster. I got that. You uh, mean for the movie Casablanca? No, 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 Casablanca, no. Kiss, Casablanca Records. Sorry, oh. uh, their original poster from '74. Wow. Uh, that goes for how much? I paid three thousand for it, which is again, it's not. That's not crazy. No, no, no. For these like are these are never going to be like fucking. They're not twenty thousand dollar items. It's it's a hobby that you can spend a decent amount of money on, but it's not going to break you if you're working and you have a decent yeah. Uh, work life. Yep. But it's not like Rolexes. It's not, yeah, Rolexes. That's are the cars. one. It's the second one in there. Yeah. The original. Uh, like I remember a, that poster. That's so just, no, one. not that one. No, that's no. 51. I remember bucks. that. I remember that poster right there. That one's just a print, but that it, he has the original of that Castle Black. I had an original of it. I had, that, I had it, yeah. that poster on my wall. Uh, that that one you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's like some, some of the Japanese Victor posters are, are kind of Holy Grail items for me now, but the Holy Grail moves because it's about the addiction of just yep. getting stuff, you know? It's it's not the about Japanese are great collectors, aren't dude, they? They have great, great. Their kiss posters are weird. Like uh, they're 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 like weird old stage shots. They're like weird moments in time. Like they have these kiss posters on rice pa paper, and they're just strange moments that have been captured. Yeah, like I have a couple of those. Like I just love the, it. the kiss crew is weird. Like not weird. They're obviously you know legendary. But when you look back on them, like you look at all the makeup and what they were wearing and stuff. Like my kids were. I was watching an old kiss video. Like da daddy, are those women? I'm like, no, nah, it's what they did back then. It's, it's what they did. It's just, it was androgyny in a really yeah. weird way. Yeah, they were gender benders. It was glam rock. But they were more Remember masculine. Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror was one of the greatest movies of all time. I mean, absolutely. They, they, they were have, definitely more masculine. Like did. Oh yeah, Gene definitely. Paul had kind of like the the performance. Former energy. He's gay, I think. Paul Paul Stanley's actually gay in real life. Isn't he's he? married with kids. I mean, I don't know if he is, but he's definitely married. His son's Sorry. a performer. Hey, man. Sorry, Paul. Um, hey, man. But he used to work at a gold. I mean, I, I oh, did he? Right on. He's Cole in good Abbey. shape. Oh yeah. I was probably in love with him when I was a kid and didn't know it yeah. because he sang. You know, it's the Star Child. He was amazing. But you even look at like Mick Jagger, <laughs> like the way he moves and some of the shit he wore in Fuck the seventies. David Bowie, didn't they have sex? Yeah, yeah. That's yes, and, and by the way, Robert Plant used to wear the the clothes. Bring up Robert Plant in the seventies. Robert yeah. Plant used to wear. The clothing of the women he had sex with the night before. That's what he would do. I mean, how so awesome put on is their, that? He put on their blouse. Look at look at that shit. He'd wear things. They were too small for him. And he would just wear that. He'd wear that shirt. It's like even Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz last night at the Grammys, he was wearing like this like see-through thing here and these tight leather pants. My wife was like, man, he looks cool. I'm like, you know how ridiculous yeah. I would look if I put that oh, on? Yeah. Nobody, that, 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 nobody more influential as a rock star than him yeah it, every 80s every 80s singer from axel rose to motley crue to vince whatever is vince every one of them yeah. copied him they were they all a ton of high voices and they wore too. their hair long like yeah. that every single one of them nobody was like them they're yeah. still astonishing yeah led zeppelin's still the most astonishing band in my opinion the i got to watch heavy metal rock and roll i was i was much more of a sabbath fan but when robert plant was doing solo stuff <laughs> He was doing something for Sirius XM. So uh, actually me and Opie from Opie and Anthony were sitting in a room probably a little bigger than this. And he was going to do something for Sirius Jeez. listeners. And we were probably from here to, to these guys away from Robert Plant. And he was just like I, going through his set. Was, me and Opie were the only oh guys watching God. him because it was a warm up. So we got to sit there and watch him. He was doing some Zeppelin. He was doing some uh, new stuff. It really was That's pretty amazing. Legend. Yeah, to watch him I mean, that close felt. And, and uh, at Sirius, speaking of Sirius, you've been, you've been on there for how long? <clears throat> It'll be 20 years, <clears throat> excuse me, at the, end of this, um, at the end of this contract, which is one more year. Like when I think years. of Sirius, I think of you and then Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. I don't really know anybody like uh, Rude Jude, out of there yeah he's Ellis funny is too. gone yeah rude jude's great ellis is gone There's jason a, i love jason yeah, ellis Jason's great um sway has a good show uh <clears throat> excuse me that's lovely um who kid has a show uh you know he's the 50 cents dj he's really funny there's some good shows on there but i don't listen to anything including my own show i just do yeah. it and then leave anything i do i just ignore unless i'm editing it and like our the videos i do with my wife we edit and then once they're up i never no. again you know how to edit that can't. shit wow i mean i have someone who's better like i can just get like funny beats and funny moments or moments that i think are funny but as far as the technicality part of it, no, I just chop it in iMovie and send and it to is, someone. Do you see Howard at the at the? Do you go into that <clears> serious? <throat> Oh yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm four days a week. Because Howard was doing it from his home, right, for a hot second. Yeah, I've met Howard a couple times there. We don't know each other. Um, I think I've met his wife more than him. Um, Weird, because he's been there. Like you two are the <clears> staples <throat> of Syria. Yeah, we are, but we go in different 
studios. Yeah. Like Howard's on one side, and like around the early two, like two thousand seven, eight, nine. Artie was on his show and I was on Opie and Anthony and I would just bump into Artie, you know, four mornings a week in the elevator. I love Artie. Uh, I do too. How's he doing? I haven't talked to him, but I hear he's doing well. Good. Which I'm happy for. Me yeah. too. But I would, I, you know, I was up all night fucking, I just don't sleep well and Artie was doing heroin and we were making it in at the same time. <laughs> uh, it was so funny. He'd have his sunglasses on and I always loved him and, then, and then in the morning, the two shows were kind of rivals and I'd go, all right, I'll see you later and he would just go into Howard and I would go to o a but it was great. I, Ar I Artie, Artie, I've always said after being in this business for 30 years, I, Artie, in many ways, because I worked with him on Mad TV for two years. All right. I, I have never, uh, I don't think I've ever met anybody who was naturally that funny and that good at improv. That, yeah. that His ability to just come up with things out of the blue. I've, it's never ceased to amaze me. He could improvise a song. He would start improvising a song, and it just and like he could do it right there and rhyme it, and just I I, I never saw anything like it. He yeah, I love him. I haven't seen him in a while. He had stepped aside and was like taking time for himself. And then a few years ago, I was doing this tour with a bunch of other comedians, uh, and we you know it was like antisocial. It was called. It was like myself and. And Stanhope did a few, and Bird did a few. Wow. Um, Attell did a bunch of them, and Artie came on and did a few. And uh, it was like his first stand-up back. And uh, he's just, he's very loved. Like, people love Artie Lang. There's yes. something very genuine about him. Uh, again, he shows you everything. You see the good, the bad, the ugly, the successes, the failures. Um, he's, he's no shame about who he is as a human being. No. And I think that's why people he's just connect with him. He's yeah. amazing. He's authentic. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. him. And and you you have no plans to ever leave. Do you live in New York? I live in New York, and I, I don't want to leave it. Um, again, my wife likes it out here, and I like it to come out and, and visit. Like, I love coming out here. And, and I used to hate it because you think you're supposed to as a dickheaded younger New York comic. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm real. So is everybody out here. I just, I don't like the fucking, uh, yeah, I, know. <laughs> I get fat and lazy when I'm out here compared to New York. Yeah. I can just walk to the cellar every night and walk home. So I kind of like that ecosystem to yeah. be in. And didn't, didn't the comedy store just pass you? They, you know, it's so funny. I saw a post. I, like, I know. I, I, what? I, 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 I haven't that's been adorable. on there in a long time. I like those guys. I went in there and saw Pryor there in 95. I was out here with, it was like one of our first yeah. LA trips when uh, Caroline's was managing people. And I came out with Patrice, myself, J.R. Havlin, and a couple of other guys. And Richard was on. So that's how long I've been going to the store. And uh, I've done sets there. And Mitzi saw me there and said I could do sets. But I guess I wasn't a past regular. Um, you just weren't living here, and you weren't. But yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't take it personally. I just I was yeah. never out here. So um, they were always very generous to me when I came out. All the clubs were. They were always like, if you want to go on, let us know. Uh, they were very generous. Um, but yeah, I, I read that and yeah, I saw that. I'm like, oh wow. Well, I, yeah, I was kind of. Were you close to Patrice? He was one of my closest friends. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Went to Brazil three times together. I spent a lot of time with Patrice. So smart. He was, and that was the worst mistake people could make about Patrice because he was loud and he was silly. And he was obnoxious, so but he was also a brilliant guy. And people who would get into it with him, who thought like, oh, this is just a big, fat, loud guy, found out very quickly, like, Made no, a mistake. no, he's going to slice you open down the middle. Can you okay. imagine if they had podcasting now oh for Patrice? Because he was like always kind of anti-Hollywood. Yeah. He, he was been. always he like anti-Hollywood. But if <laughs> think about the fan base he would have oh if he was God. on his own, he'd controlling be a, he'd his own. Thing. He would have been amazing. Be, yeah. yeah. He, like, he, uh, Tim he sat me down with Dove. And I, I, you know, knew him a little bit, like tiny bit, like here and there. Yeah. But we sat down, and he started talking about the difference between men and women, and relationships. And I, I, I didn't even know what to say. I'd never heard anybody break down, and my my mouth was a little open. And I look at Dove, and Dove goes, "He drops a heavy truth." <laughs> I told you, he drops a heavy Dove. truth. Dove's another one who's smart as oh, shit. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. My wife's one of my favorite human beings. On the yeah, planet. me too. I love. Dove. I see Dove three or four nights a week. Dove Davidov is uh, he's the one best. of the great comics. Really funny. Oh, fuck. And uh, a great guy. Like just a very solid person. He always looks like he's thinking about something else, though. He is. Like whenever I say hello to Dove, I'm always like, "All right, I'm pulling you out of whatever thought you're in right now," because he's always he always looks like he's debating something. That's and then a great way yeah. to describe Dove. Yeah, god, but he's very best. funny. And he walks on stage, and he, I don't think I've ever seen Dove not do well on stage. Oh, He's no. really good. So good. He I say things Dove. like that. They were talking about Manny Pacquiao and how Manny Pacquiao used to, and we're, it's, all of us, we're all sitting around, we're watching this, this expose on Manny Pacquiao, and, and he's got his girl there. Dove's got his girl there. And, he's, and he could never sit still. And he's just listening. And they're talking about how hard it was for Manny Pacquiao because as a kid, he sold fans that he had to make out of feathers from pigeons he caught. And whatever. It's a fucking impossible yeah. way of growing up. Yeah. And then he fought his way up to five weight classes. And it was just this 
towering epic life of a guy who came from the center of the earth and just hey you know and it's just like the music and fucking there's a pause and dub goes yeah fun if i can make fans you know, on the streets of philippines fucking try monogamy sometime <laughs> <laughs> he just leaves the room that does and, the best. and his girlfriend's like the fuck? yeah it does the best <laughs> this is what i have to be married to yeah it does the hey am i able to piss real quick i, yeah. I gotta pee too i gotta pee it. like no one asked me to yeah okay yeah. cool thank Go you pee. i love yeah. podcasting we'll wrap it up Sam. no no i'm in no rush I, I, I really have yeah. to. Me too. Uh, guys, when it comes to macadamia nuts, the most delicious nuts on the planet. You Dude, and you're them. a nut expert. You've always loved nuts. I we, love we've nuts. We've always said that about Brian. We yep. go, what's the one thing Brian loves? I love nuts some, in his mouth. I like some some buttery, good for you Warm. nuts with omega seven fatty acids. Don't know what that means, but apparently it's good for longevity. Fat Either nuts. way, here's the thing: macadamia nuts. Usually, you buy a pack, it's your house payments. They're so expensive. Not so with House of Macadamias. They have cornered that market. They work with like 90 farmers in South Africa. Partner.houseofmacadamias.com slash T-F-A-K. You can get your favorite bundle, get free snack bars every time with 15% off the whole order. Plus, certain bundles come with bonus goodies like free macadamia milk and free shipping. Uh, change up your macadamia subscription at any time no strings attached and you can pause or cancel at any time but get those nuts they are ridiculously delicious it's also a great gift everybody loves macadamia nuts I'm your your this. wife couldn't get into the country for five years yeah it was this. a long immigration process oh, she's trans um, no, no, no. They, I mean, that, that would have been really She's just Norwegian. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Norwe yeah, she was, you know, Norwegian. She terrorist. Was, I, she was I, coming through and they frisked her. They're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, and yeah, they was, sent her back home. Waiting period, Packing yeah. heat. Yeah, no, she had a minor marijuana charge. Like, I mean, it was a, uh, a text message about, uh, she asked somebody about smoking hash. And her, this is true. And her friend got arrested for some other matter. And they looked through her phone and found the text message. My what? wife was Jesus. 18 when she sent it. It, it was like the craziest thing. Why didn't she just come illegally through the border like everybody else? Uh, dude, the yeah. rage. Because Biden wasn't president. When I was fucking going to see her in Canada, like it's a long story, but I, I, I put her in Canada from Norway uh, during the immigration process. We were, she'd been rejected four times. And I would always think about sneaking her home in my trunk. I'm like, she would have been in the country already, which so she easy. wouldn't have. But I, it, you get angry at people. Uh, but I also have empathy for people coming across the border. Like, like I, I don't agree with it because it took us five years. But I also am very fortunate. I have money for a good lawyer uh, who can navigate Homeland Security and all this nonsense and layer after layer so after much layer. Tape, yeah. But like, I understand the emotion of hopping over. I'm not saying I agree with it, but like having, I, I used to think she'll never get in. I'm not going to have my life. Like this is the person I want to spend my life with and it's not going to happen. So it was always horrible depression on and off for five years. Jeez. So people who cross illegally are wrong. But I also, I'm like, I get why you want to because- Dude, this is a movie. It's, it was so fucking a movie. By the way, don't think for a second, Jim, that I'm not going to be watching this TV show. And I wouldn't have watched it if she wasn't trans. How about that? It's interesting to me now. It Thank adds you. a layer of interest. I'm not to you. And it's probably wrong that I even say that because she's a human being and just happens to be that. It's the problem that I'm gay. Okay, I'm a, I'm a regular person who happens to be attracted to the same ch sex in some yeah. instances. But you so just said the only thing. reason you're watching is she's but that's trans, right. you that's piece right. of shit. That's right, I'm going to watch it. No, I just, you it watch adds a gym? layer of color to Jim. So <laughs> of course piece of now, shit, I'm going to watch it for you're Jim. You're the problem. No, I'm going to watch it for Jim, but, I, but it just, it adds that layer of color. Now I'm like, of course, this all makes sense. This is fantastic. So. Yeah, I know it, it is, it is obviously it's what makes us different as a couple, but we yeah. are a same couple, uh, like, like most people. But of course that's what's different about us. Um, I think people will like it if they watch it. I think there's it's, there's some funny moments in it. It's not preachy at all. Um, and we've been very careful to not be because I hate when people preach at me. It never converts me. No. It never changes can my Can I opinion. ask you something if it's offensive? Sure. Tell me to fuck off. You can ask me anything. When you guys fight, do you fight like uh, like a normal couple or because she used to be a man, do you fight like dudes? And, and anyone, you know what I'm saying? 100%, yeah. Is that but a weird the, one? To argue with her. It, it is like every woman I've ever argued with. There is not an ounce of male in her emotionalism when she argues. Really? It is it, uh, the, the soul and brain of a female. And I, I know that that sounds crazy and people think no. I'm polluting myself. That's why she's wired. I'm 55. Wired. If I was fucking, if I, liked, if I liked you guys, I would tell you. But I really, 
her fucking brain is the brain of a woman. It, it, there's no, and, and again, I understand what the comments will be coming back. No, I wouldn't. You know, but, that, but I think that's where people get confused. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think there is a thing where it's just people are born that way. The wiring is what it is, and yep. that's how they are. Yep. And then there's also this movement of people that now I'm it's like the hot wagon. thing to do, yeah. and they're lost, so they get pushed in that direction. Yes. But I, yeah, you, your, no, your wife was born is a real that way. Thing. Yeah, but like, there are, in, in, like I think someone like Bruce Jenner or your wife. I mean that that's yeah. there. I know somebody who transitioned back in '95 who worked on my show on Mad TV. She was a hairstylist, but 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 Michelle was taking her sister's birth control pills when she was a boy at 14. She was always a girl. You, it's a weird thing. Like yeah, like the the thing that's weird is like there there are people who just are confused in life. And claim that because they think it's an identity, Correct. and then there are people who really are yes. transgender. That's because it's an option now. Yes, when, like even when I was yes. a kid, that was not an option. No. It's like any other thing in life, any other any other group of people in life, any other thing in life. You have people that are genuine and it's who they are, yes. and people who are. Yeah. I, I don't know who's who. I I know my I wife think, is who she I is. I think the people that use it as like an out, right, and it's like the thing to do. I think it actually hurts the movement. Mm. You know, it's, there are people that hurt the movement, sure, by being so crazy radical. It doesn't make sense to anybody who's just kind of willing to listen to you. But I mean, it's a hard life. Like, uh, I don't see why anybody would actually choose it. I Me mean, neither. trans girls get the shit beat out of them. They yeah. get like, it's not an easy existence. No. Um, you know, she and I go out. We're very, it's much nicer than we thought it would be. Do you have to worry about like, do you ever get in weird situations where like safety is an issue because she's trans? No, or? but when we travel, I, the first thing I do is see, is this a place where it's good for us or not? Um, I'll never go to a place that probably not going to Russia. You're not never. You're not I'll going never. to Chechnya. Never. I'll never go to any Middle Brazil's Eastern country. Brazil's probably a hard pass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you Brazil. can't do it. You know, I, I don't want to be someplace that hates our guts either. Like you're not doing me a fucking favor by seeing. I, you know, I like the Burj Khalifa, but you know, if you want to throw us off it, I'd prefer yeah, not to go right, there. Yeah. Huh? You look annoying. at pictures. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, there's nowhere I need to go, but yeah, yeah. it's a safety is a concern. Yeah. But uh, you know, you are a white belt though. I am, yeah. So I can at least roll around. If somebody in a wheelchair attacks me, <laughs> I, I can fucking at this point grab one of their fucking soft, mealy, pliable legs. And <laughs> soft, mealy, pliable legs. Put them in the ankle lock. The, the, like I can't feel the it. Title yeah. for this episode is "Soft, Mealy, Pliable Legs." <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him. Can't feel that arm. All right, Tim. What do you got? Lock. All right. First one is Dana White. Him talking about, um, you know, there's, there's a little Instagram clip, so I'll just play that for you guys. I don't want to speak too much on it because I that Dana looks good, Jesus. Doesn't that, he? That plus dude, a lot of weight, yeah. Man, that, that nutritionist is doing the Lord's work, man. He's yeah, jacked. Bro, I don't want to speak too much on it because I don't know enough about it, but apparently there's a basketball team up there that is incredible. High school, uh, high school or college team, I'm not sure. Um, they're really good, and they're smoking teams. The state is now going to impose something on them. They're going to be penalized oh, wow. for blowing teams out of the water uh, as bad as they are because they're too good. Is That's this insane. in California? Yeah, it sounds perfectly in the moment. Right? That's exactly what's happening. Where's it at, Chin? Did you look into it? Have you ever sure in won't. your fucking, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. So I'm, I'm going to reach out to the coach oh, you of the team out there and, and see what I could do. If anything, I want to bring that whole team out to a fight. In Las Vegas, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to reward these yes. guys yes. for being such badasses. When, when, when these, 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 these pussies, yep. okay, that 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 control whatever league they're in or whatever are trying to do this to them. I love it's, that. It's disgusting, yeah. and every one of you that are involved in this in, in the state of Maine that are imposing this oh, thing on this team, you 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 guys fucking make me sick. They, the, okay? Those people you are what's wrong those with this country right now. putting the sanctions on have never played sports. So of yeah. course, like, what, this what is unfair. They, they're, they're trying to literally sanction them? They're, they they're they do it good. here too. Like my, my son's team, they didn't want to keep score. I bring a scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. 4-0. 5-0. I don't, I mean, what are we doing? And we blame young people, like, like, like the, whatever the new generation is. It's not their fault. It's the fucking people that are like below my generation yeah. in their late 30s 
that that raised them. It's not. It's, they, they, bl- don't blame young people. And most of the time, it's a lot the of people, people our age in the academic world who are uh, already indoctrinated. It's, it's the people school. putting the sanctions on, like this type of thing. Never played sports. Yeah, and and then their kids are probably really shitty at sports, so they want to make their kids feel good or sanctions. make their friends feel good. But it's sports, dude. It's I was very good black at and white. It. I knew early on I wasn't good at it. You know why? Because I struck out a lot, and because I fucking hit a little squibber up the first baseline, and my coach is like, "Run, Jimmy!" Yep. And I'm like, "It's a foul." ball <laughs> and then it went fair and i was standing there with the bat and i got thrown out and humiliated now imagine so if they had sanctions on imagine if they had sanctions like all right when jim's up we're gonna put a t out yeah like, as a kid you're like no, i, I don't probably would like this. that if it was a t it's <laughs> it's, it's a, it is marxist it's like it's like let's make everybody equal and yeah. the smart and, and the way you make everybody equal is you take the special people and you have to push Correct. them down it's you a bunch of lazy, them. lazy fucking parents who don't want to explain to their kid, hey, losing with dignity is okay, too. That's all it is. It's also it, ideologues. It's ideologues. What's an ideologue? An ideologue is somebody who believes in an ideology like in a, in a fixed truth oh, that okay. is not responsive to evidence. It's really a form of a religion. It's a form yeah. of religion without a transcendent truth. Okay. His, son is, uh, his son is seven and weighs as much as my 12-year-old. And oh, it's, big and kid? It's not fat. He's, right. No, it's... It's all muscle and bone. How tall? Just kind of look at the size of him. He's on steroids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's tall enough and very strong. He's on EPO, man. Very athletic. Yeah. He could do the slap fight league, but can't fight in the UFC. Yeah. Know? Yeah, not yet. You know, I'm doing UFC. No, hell no. I tell him, kid, no. Yeah, like, uh, I fought in the UFC because I had no options. Kids with options don't fight in the UFC. Right. No, it comes from, as, as it's a hard life. Mike Tyson says, it comes from the gutters. Like, you got to have... Yeah, you're not growing up with your dad driving what I drive, fighting the UFC. It's Would you want him to fight, like, say, in just pure jiu-jitsu tournaments? Yeah. That's, like, safe. Yeah, he loves jiu-jitsu, loves wrestling. I'd let him do that. But yeah. as far as, like, it's a tough gig, man. It's tough. And it, it's, again, this isn't a knock on Dana, but as far as, like, the, the fighter pay and stuff, it's just the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Like, I have friends who are world champions who are screwed, man. Fucked. Yeah. Like, horrible CT, uh, lost their jobs. They can't hold a job. Like, alcohol problems, drug problems. Hmm. So it's, it's just just not worth the squeeze. It's right. not like football, baseball. Yeah, hell yeah, it's worth the squeeze. You get some injuries, you're gonna be compensated down the road. But UFC, it's just, they're just again, it's not it's not Dana's job. I don't harp on Dana anymore. I I usually agree with ninety nine point nine nine percent of things Dana says. Me and him are, I agree with him. I have no yeah. issues with him. But when it comes to it's just where it's at. They're in leather helmets if it's the NFL. So the the conversation is just not there yet. So with my son, it's like no, it's not worth it, man. It's too yeah. much work. Yeah, and plus getting there. I mean, plus there's a lot of fighting to get there. You're not just yeah, getting. You're, you're not literally. just signing up for the UFC, getting a great contract. You no, got to no. fight on the regional circuit. And if if you know, maybe you make it, maybe you don't. It's a yeah. Uh, the, and there's yeah. With, there's a more of a blueprint now than when I was fighting. Like they have the Dana White Contender Series now. So it's like you start in a regional circuit, whether it's in Jersey or California. You fight in the LFA, you become champ there. Then hopefully you get invited to the Ultimate Fighter or to the Dana White Contender Series. Then you earn your contract on there. Then in the UFC. But then the work starts. That's what people don't realize. <laughs> It's the same with the NFL. Like, just because you're in the NFL, you're not balling. Yeah. Like, you got to get to that second contract. And you'll see, you got to get to that second. I didn't start making money until I got to my second contract. By the way, I just, uh, just to point out what just happened here, is I, as a fat titted white belt, just explained <laughs> to a former UFC fighter the path to the UFC. No, the I fact enjoy that it. you didn't get up and plant your foot in my face <laughs> uh, it shows that you're a very nice person. <laughs> if you would have kicked me in my fucking face. No, you're frog right, though, neck, brother. No. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't have said it. Here's how you get to the UFC. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, tits. <laughs> I, I love, I love, uh, the other thing I like about Jim is he hates himself as much as I hate myself, so I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I hate myself accurately. I just report what I see. Have, have the you, fact that I just did that. He no, politely get, went on to really explain how it happened. You can do no wrong, but I asked you if you and your wife fight like me and my wife. So you, yeah, it's a fair question. You could have slapped me in the face. No, I never mind that. I've had, uh, I had a former, I'm not going to say what weight class, but a former UFC champion, not being a dick, was asking like, bro, does she have a dick? Like, they, like there's people who are rude and there's people who just don't know anybody else in this type yeah. of relationship and ask. And it's like, I'm not afraid of, yeah. yeah, you can tell when someone's asking a real question, when someone's being horrible. I didn't mind. The questions are fine. But h- how much have you learned from doing a, a UFC pod with Matt Sarah? You know, I, I love legend. fighters. I, I, and Matt is, Matt is the, probably the most genuine guy. Uh, he's very much like Henzo. <clears throat> and I don't know Henzo nearly as well, but they're freight trains. Like they're, uh, Henzo is a freight train yes. of energy. Like you can't not look at him when he's in the room. You can't not listen they to demand him. demand attention. It, it, just by being himself. Yes. Matt is the same way. It's this fucking barreling freight train, 100% genuine. 
Yeah. Like, I, I mean, what he says, whatever the fuck he wants. If he doesn't like something, he can't pretend he does. You know what I mean? He, hey, you know, <laughs> Matt is just a hundred percent real person. He's yep. one of my favorite people I've ever known. And have, just doing the show with him, have you? Has it make you love the UFC more? Or when you see how the hot dogs made, are you a little like, all right? No, I love it more because it's so. Just training that in the eight months I've been training. Like, I used to always have fighters put me in moves, uh, but I would just to see, like, I, I know you watch this stuff. I want to know, what does it feel like? Yeah. And the first one to do was BJ Penn and put me in an arm bar. Just to, and I'd never felt it before. And I was realizing, I'm being pulled in two different directions. Like, <laughs> you don't get that from watching it's it. disconcerting. It fucking hurts. Right. And they were being gentle. Yeah. I wasn't and he's testing He's not a them. big guy, but a guy like that puts his hands on you and you're like, oh, no. I'm, a, I'm walking around. I am an absolute gazelle among lions. But Kane put me in a guillotine. That hurt. Kane did? Um, and fucking John Jones hurt me. He put me, it was like fight week and he was cutting weight. Bad time to ask someone to do a fucking leg kick. <laughs> and he put his giant John Jones shin in my thigh. Oh my God. And I had to go to the bathroom because I thought I was going to vomit. <laughs> but I almost shit my pants. I'm not kidding. It was like my body just said, it, Shut was, down. it was like oh, in yeah. shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, and I he was probably just kind of whacked you a little. It, when you watch him do it, it was nothing like he could have done it. No. And do, um, do you guys up. do anything live around the events? Do you guys we do it have live? before, but they put us in these weird, loud, uh, like we interviewed Luke Rockhold, and I forget who else we interviewed, but it was in this loud, out like venue with fans doing signings. Yeah, they don't just, specialize in podcasts. Yeah, it's got to be a smaller venue. But uh, yeah, I love I love these guys. I've talked to all of them, as I'm sure you have, and they're all they're all just nice guys. They've none of them are dicks. I've never had you a fighter be a one. dick to me. No, you won't find one. Yeah, most of them are great too guys. Too humbling. They'd be, uh, yeah, and it also... It's too hard. Yeah. Too it's hard. just fucking hard. Same with comics. Like, you won't find a lot of dick comics. Like, mostly, it's too hard. It's too hard of a gig. Joe raised a point, uh, which I thought was a good point, in the comparison of you're humbled constantly. When you're fighting, you're always being tapped in the gym. You're always being submitted. Uh, and when you're doing comedy, jokes are always not working. You're always... But there's always a thing that reminds you of... Hey. Nelson Poirier said that. I said to him, what drives you? He said, I'm, I, I always keep my student mind. I'm a student. I'm always a student. I'm always learning. Yeah. I stay a student. Yeah, knowing where you stand really helps. Like, yeah. hey, there's always people better than me. I mean, in our field especially, like, there's the people who are a lot better than me, and there's people who are a lot more successful than me. Uh, and there's people that used to open for me that are selling 16,000 seats. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy for them. Um, I <laughs> couldn't be happier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why would I be, why why would I be would unhappy I be for someone? 16,000 seats. That's a lot of Oh, uh, Too much for comedy. That's what I say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would love intimacy. to do that. <laughs> I, I read a stat because Billy Joel performed last night for the first time in 30 years, and they were giving off his stats. He sold Mass Square Garden out 150 times. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. 150 he did a residency, times. Yeah. times. The arena, Masquerade, 150. He's amazing. In my head, I was just yeah. thinking about the money. I'm like, he's Joel, balling. I just dude. listened to his newest song. It's yeah. amazing. Oh, it makes me sad. Ah. Right? Well, he had to. His brother, was his brother, brother-in-law, someone in his family took a lot of his money and to go back on tour. Yeah. He had something happen to him where he got oh, his business by manager, now. right? Yeah. He's his that. business manager. Oh, is that who it was? Yeah. yeah. I'm when, blaming when, his family. It was his father stole it. <laughs> I don't know who it was. Like last <laughs> night, they're like, Billy Joel performed for the first time in 30 years. Yeah. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Is he going to do some of the hits? And like, new song. I'm like, shit. Wait, he's been on it. But you liked it, right? He did a residency. No. What? Before <laughs> the lights go down. He's been performing yes. a lot. You mean the first new song? The yeah, first, oh, first time first song he's performed written on in, stage. In oh. 30 years. In 30 years. Wait, but um, you're wait, talking about the, a guy with 130 songs. Of just, I mean, what were you saying, Jim? He's been performing a like, lot. Are you saying that I'm lost? He His was, first live performance in 30 years, they said. No, he's been doing the garden every week or every month. He had a residency there oh, recently. Wow. Really? Maybe yeah. it was his first new material. Right. That might have been it. Cause, Maybe. Uh, so he's been at the garden 150 100, so, No, but a lot. sold out, Bubba. Yeah. Yeah, he had sold a out. No, make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen. That's like you two right now at uh, in Vegas, Las Vegas. That that show. Is oh, insane. that sphere. Insane. Yeah. yeah. I saw Billy years ago. We had the same agent at one point. Personal appearance. Uh, they only did musicians, so I got a nice ticket to see him and Elton John. And he took us back to meet him, me and Bob Kelly. And he just sits there and eats Fisherman's Friends in between sets. It was bizarre to watch what a guy <laughs> does yeah. for the voice. Like, I yeah. guess that they, he was just chewing them one after the other after the other. What's what Fisherman Friends? Oh, those, those really sharp cough drops they're like very oh i know what you're talking heavy about heavy fucking menthol yeah they're, um, they're intense cough drops yeah, yeah. but i guess it's as good to smooth out the voice if you need 74 it. years old still doing it yeah they're He's delicious amazing. actually <laughs> i like a good fisherman's friend yeah or Buckley's is a good cough medicine. Their motto is it tastes awful and it works. <laughs> I'll it's take that. Canadian. That get, that get, no I, was, I would Buckley's. buy it. 
Buckley's, yeah. But, but uh, he was saying, Billy Joel was saying, he was like, he was touring for so long, he just fell, he like, fell out of love with it. From the tour life, the right. travel life, he's like, I'm done. And he's like, I don't want to do it. New York. I think he needs money now. Which and I'll drive feelings. to Long Island. I'll just helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'll helicopter from the Long Island sound. Yeah. 150 shows, Mass Square Garden. God. That dude is bald. But I love his music, man. I've always been a huge... I know every one of his songs by heart probably just because as a kid, I was like, this guy's fucking... Colin Quinn is not a fan of Billy Joel. <laughs> uh, so what I like doing is occasionally I'll catch Uptown Girl yeah. or something on the radio and I'll have to just take a little video and say, what's the line he hates the most? And it ruined the song for me. Um, uh, uh, tell her all your crazy dreams and tell her about it. I'm yeah, like, I oh, hate that song though. That's not a good Some of those line. songs are the worst, but they, the songs like from Songs in the Attic and stuff, those songs are great. Yeah, I enjoy Billy Joe. I think Down Easter Alexa is a great song. Yeah, yeah, Down Easter Alexa is a great song. I wrote that for the fishermen. Yeah. Long Island, who are going out of business. Yeah. I happen to love Billy Joel, yeah. but it's just fun to me that Colin does that's it. That's a hell of a song. 150 shows. Dude. Yeah. It's pretty impressive, Kelly. right? Kelly. Insane. I'm impressed when comics do it because comics got to do different material every time. Like, that's the amazing. Like, you look at Sebastian Maniscalco, who's doing, like, oh, he's adding a fifth show at the Garden. That fucker's got to have a different hour every year. Like, 100%. 100%. Singers have to have their voices. Sebastian's always worked his ass off. It's, he's got that Italian work ethic. Yeah, right? musicians yeah. can play the hits and get yeah. out. They can play the hour of hits. Sebastian has to do a new hour. He's up there banging out a new hour in front of the Garden. Sebastian's a beast, man. And, and Bill, same thing. Any of these guys that are doing, you can get away with it more in a club. Because a lot of times it's people who are just going to the club anyway. But yeah. if they're going to the Madison Square Garden, yeah, they're going to see you. See a show, right yeah. All the time. What else it's got impressive. To? Fuck yeah, it is. It's a lot of bad sets too, I'm sure. Getting there. A lot of fucking <laughs> tanked jokes, and, <laughs> yeah. you know? Jeez. Working so, on material. Yeah. So boy. Joe Rogan just signed a $250 million expansion deal with Spotify. It's brilliant what Spotify is doing. So you know what they're doing? So before it was just exclusive on Spotify. Yeah. But now they're paying Joseph a truck ton of money. <laughs> But yeah, Joseph Rogan, they're paying him a yes. truckload of money. But now they're they're going to get their money back off the ads. Yeah. So now it's going to be on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, regular YouTube. Yeah. So it's brilliant because it builds the audience, and then they reap all the benefits from the ads. And Rogan gets his flat fee. It's brilliant. Yeah. When Rogan, I don't care who you are. Obviously, Joseph's a huge uh, friend. But when he goes to Spotify, I know a lot of people that stop listening just because they don't they can't keep so up they, with it. Howard, not easy. Like, yeah. hear a stat. So on Spotify. So the the twenty percent of all listeners are listening to Joe Rogan on Spotify. So if you're on Spotify, so if somebody's listening to Spotify anywhere in the world, there's a one in five chance they're listening to Joe Rogan. It's crazy. You know crazy. it's crazy, crazy, but think about it. they signed Dak Shepard, Caller Daddy, a ton of shows. Remember they're just forking over yeah. so much money. Rogan's the only one they resigned. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I guess it's um, a hard business model to keep. Yeah, um, very tough. He's got some crazy magic because Lex Friedman's getting one million, uh, Modern Wisdom's getting five hundred thousand. The different, like you know, big well, they podcasts. pulled it back because before 13, they're giving out he's 80 million, 70 million. Point, he's averaging thirteen point five million listens. Thirteen point point five. I mean, it's, it's crazy. That's why. Yeah. It's crazy. That's just on the first. He's like hanging out with a politician now. Yeah. Yeah. Like we go to a restaurant, security's like, he's coming through. You're like, Jesus no Christ, way. dude. I know. I was like, yeah, congrats on the deal. He's like, thanks, brother. You know, it's like, just like, I don't know what to say. I'm like, you're, you're, good. you're a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. It is awkward. What do you say to somebody? Unless you're worth 150 million and they got 250 million, then you're like, ah, good one. But <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> when yeah. you're, you know, I but, guess there's a point where it doesn't matter. But yeah. I also think it kind of sucks for them that they report the money. My friend, like I, I hate yeah. when like the NBA or NFL do when they report like Patrick Mahomes getting whatever eight hundred fifty yeah. million or Otani's getting seven hundred million. It's like, can you just say big contract like sign tenure? <laughs> like, do you have to leak their info? Because yeah. you got the snakes out there, like right. Rogan's friends, the haters. Like, I just do you have to leak exact numbers? Uh, I prefer them to leak Joe's numbers than what I'm making. Uh, I would prefer yeah. that than the yeah. humiliation of what I'm yeah. doing a club yeah. for. I hear you. Yeah, man, it never ends. If you make two hundred fifty million, you don't mind people knowing it either, especially if you got security and you know, yeah, it's, you, know. you own guns. Here's another two hundred fifty mil. Yeah, it's good to see. So one more. Or yeah, one good? more. Okay, cool. This one. Yeah. This is so dope. Shane yep. Gillis is gonna be hosting SNL. If you guys remember, he had the shortest SNL contract. Yes. Hired one day, fired the next because of a little. Bringing him back. Joke. Here's what's crazy is the how full circle. Shane Gillis is so much bigger in Saturday Night Live. Huge. Like they need him. When before they fired him, now he's bigger than they are. And I his will, shows get more views, his skits that he does gets more views than Saturday Night Live. I love Shane. And by the way, I will pat myself on the back. I did call this recently that they were going to hire him. Oh. 
Oh. Um, it was a smart move, and he's doing so well. And he and he really he just did it in spite of the fact that they died. It's fucking it's amazing. And I like the fact that people rallied around that. Me too. I like that the fans went fuck this. Me too. This guy's funny. Me too. And he also signed with Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, Shane's crushing it, man. Yes, he is. There's like a new crop out there in New York, right? It's like the Tim Dillons, Chrissy D. Tim is Schultz. out here, but Chris D. Schultz, those guys. But Tim Mark started Norman. in New York, right? What's that? Tim started he in did, New York yes. with you guys. So Tim, you got Tim Schultz, DeStefano. Uh, Mark Norman is killing. Fucking Sam Morell is hilarious. Sam, yeah, those boys Mateo are Lane is fucking Mateo's you know, great. He's funny. Mateo Mateo's is a monster. He's great. Funny, man. And he sells out theaters. He's so um, great. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that young crops crush. are doing very well. Yeah, but they're all funny and like when they go, people go back and see them again because the material is good. Yep. they're all working out at the cellar. Like they're all working. I see everything just five nights a week. They're all working on material. Yep, none of them are just showing up doing the same thing year after year. Yeah. They're all working on material. You gotta be doing that. Yeah, it's nice to see. Perfect. Shout out to Shane Gillis, man. Is that it, Jen? That's yeah. it. Look at that shit picture. <laughs> By the way, it's not the photographer's fault at all it's a picture that was not meant to be that way i look so fat i have lost a few pounds i think you look great you're a good friend i am a, such an egg-headed <laughs> pig you look boy. better now you're, for you're, sure you're, Thank you. you're i think you're an important person for comedy and i think you're an important person <laughs> for the zeitgeist and i just I find you to be a breath of fucking fresh air. Well, so. thank you, Brian. Keep doing what you're doing. I will, and it, and and it's always nice to see that there are uh, curtains that can still be pulled across the back rows of theaters <laughs> and comedy clubs. Like, thank God for curtains. Yeah, that's, that's what I should have invested in. The Richfield comedy. Playhouse, Richfield Theater. Newton for Theater. Curtains. You're at the Newton Theater, Newton, New Jersey. That's, Mystic Theater. You're doing theaters. Yes. Real well. theater, Golden State Theater, Comedy Mothership. I love it. Yeah, bunch of stuff out here. I got Austin, Houston, Dallas. Um, and we just added some stuff. So, yeah, I'm happy the tour is, is good. I just hope people come out and see it. It's a new hour of material. They definitely should, great, brother. Yeah. I hope so. It's great. And then we got Live Fire and the Kid announcing it. Live Fire and the Kid in Live Austin, Fire and the kid. Texas. Austin, Texas. Oh, nice. Get your tickets February 15th. At One show the only. Vulcan. Yeah. Special guest. Very special guest. February yep. 15th. 2004. One show only. Um. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> wow! What? I'm sorry, I right. missed that one. Wow! That. <laughs> that's refreshing. Yeah, that's when the notebook. Uh, it was back on the notebook. Uh, yeah. That's exactly that's what Ryan did, Gosling. Right? It will be there, and nobody knows him. Uh, no, Ryan we're going to get in the time up. machine. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great, guys. It's not getting too. Uh, I'm at the Well Bakersfield uh, with Sam Tripoli in the rec rooms. Uh, uh, March. No, it's February 24th. Oh, yeah, February God. 24th. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, I'm going to kill Nick. All right. Oh. Louisville Comedy Club and Bricktown Comedy Club, BrianCallen.com. All right, kids. Final Kid Live, Vulcan <laughs> Gas Theater. Uh, one show only, February 15th. That's coming up soon. Jim, we love you, man. Thank I you love you guys. Thank awesome. you. And can I just plug uh, Nikki and Jim NYC if you want to see what I'm doing with my wife? And thank you guys Fuck, for having yeah. me. I, I really course, love man. this. Thank you. You were awesome. Thanks. That was awesome.